after last night's escapade with all that uh, weather we had. Right, yes, um, what we're having to do is put the snubber back on the chain as, it, as we're pulling it up because the anchor is, is uh, bitten so hard that we can't get the anchor up. Right, sorry you didn't get to see what had happened there but someone was getting very angry with me because I was insisting on taking the chain uh, log, hold on. Right, sorry about that. What we ended up doing was putting the snubber on the chain. So the problem we've got is that we can't put too much strain on the anchor directly onto the windlass because the first thing that will happen is the windlass will rip out the deck uh, with too much strain. This is why we always use a snubber. And the second thing is we could burn the uh, windlass out. So we had to put a snubber on, but the trick with the snubber, I think, is to keep it really, really short. So unlike when you put the snubber on the chain when you anchor, we tend to put a long snubber on. So the hook is well underwater. Um, this time it was just keep the chain short. The other trick as well is to try and move in the opposite direction. So where you might normally drive over it because you know the anchor's at this angle, well it may be that the anchor has actually set at that angle. So it's worth trying to turn at 180 degrees. In the end, I actually attacked it from 90 degrees because I wasn't even sure which way the anchor had set. After a lot of to and froing and a patience, and that was the thing is not to put that strain on the directly onto the chain uh, it eventually came up but I think that probably took about 20 minutes which doesn't sound long but that's 20 minutes of solid backwards forwards going around in circles so that's a, an interesting start for the day isn't it You said to talk about the wrecks, I haven't really got very much to say other than we've got one about a mile in front of us and another one about eight or nine miles further on from that. Both dangerous, one submerged, this one submerged, the next one is visible. And we're going to stick quite close to it, go north of it because the, none of the fishing vessels are around there so we're hoping it'll be a net free zone. There are nets everywhere, I haven't seen this many nets since probably India. I would say this is on a par with when we left Cochin in India and it was just completely, I mean, carpeted with them along that West Indian coast. So this is um, similar to that, except um, I don't think they go out very far. I think they're quite, you know, around the estuary. They seem to favour the more shallow area. But it's one boat, usually with one man, sometimes two, and they put they just feed the net out and it has floats on it so it's, it's high, it's floating high, you can't go over it. And they are long, they are very long. I mean, it's a bloody hard life putting those great big nets out and bringing them all back by hand. And they're everywhere. Find your way through. Well, we think we are clear of the fishing nets now. We're on a straight run now. All the boats have got their sails out. We're jibbing, jibbing, jigging, jibbing, 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 a little bit easy for you to say. Uh, we've just had some curious fishermen come alongside us taking photos. Uh, we're probably quite a novelty to these guys. And then we've got a big uh, cruise ship or a passenger ferry that's coming up and it's actually heading to the Nunakan. So it's all busy, all go here. Well, we had a nice sail, then we had a nice motor sail, and now we've tucked the sails away because we've turned facing into the wind. We had one hour to go before our waypoint, and uh, at half an hour later I've just checked and we've still got an hour to go before our waypoint. And that's because our speed has now dropped down below three knots. It's uh, two and a half knots we're doing, and this is really because the whole of this coastline is full of estuaries, and in fact this is the mouth of a river 
similar to the Kinna Batangan, I suppose, I checked and it goes 60 miles inland, or it stretches for 60 miles from here. And of course, we're on a spring low water or falling tide, so all of this water is rushing out, and that's also why the water is so orange as well. It does make for a very tedious motor, especially because we're feeling rather tired after last night's escapades. So I think we're all just looking forward to dropping that hook at the earliest opportunity and getting a really good night's sleep tonight. Let's hope we don't have any more of those horrible westerly squalls. Got another one building. It's a big one as well. It'll be difficult to tell from the camera, but this thing is moving at a rate of knots. What I'm kind of hoping is that we are literally on the edge of it. You can see the, the front edge is already halfway down the island there. I think we're gonna get caught with the back edge. Here you can see this long column. Look at that. really quite dramatic look how dark it is when I turn around here so uh, yeah right winds picking up we're definitely gonna get wet at least and we'll get the tail end of that listen to that here we go look at that Sun isn't that magnificent it seems as if the majority of it I think has probably passed us by already. In fact, as we look down where it's gone over, it's absolutely tipping with rain and the, uh, the island's disappeared. What I'm hoping is that that's probably the worst of the wind. That was as it was approaching. You could feel the wind was actually coming from the opposite side, which is what happens, of course. It sucks up that cold air and you get a blast of cold air coming from the opposite direction. But we're sitting in the tide with the wind behind us. And you probably heard earlier on an earlier clip, the sound of the wind catching the slot where the mizzen sail slots into in the mast and that is the wind catching it because it's coming from the opposite direction so we've tidied up the cockpit we've cleared everything away uh, just in case it starts raining from behind well that was another shit night at anchor not quite as bad as the first one but there was a point at which Esper was healed over and when I went to the front to have a look at the chain and snubber, they were actually running backwards. So obviously we had wind over tide, over current, over God knows what. And uh, it made lying in bed quite uncomfortable. So I actually stayed up until, it, until the boat eventually turned. Weirdly, it didn't turn at the uh, change of tide either. It turned sort of mid-tide, which is a bit odd. At least though, when it did turn, the boat was doing much more of the sort of straightforward rock, you know, hobby horsing, rocking up and down, falls backwards. So it was a little bit easier to contend with. I was worried that this morning we were going to have the same problems with the anchor, but I'm happy to say it came up. So uh, we're heading to Tarakan today, and the problem we've got is this current. It's really strong. We're doing 2.7 knots at 1400 RPM. And uh, so I've made the suggestion that rather than trying to sort of cut down the inside, well, the, close to the edge of this island, that perhaps we should go out to the 20 meter contour line just a guess it's just a theory but you never know you might find uh, slightly less tidal influence out there so we're going to try that I think we're all just keen to get to Tarakan and just have a rest Whew. I need a coffee I had my coffee and it was one of the best coffees Liz has ever made <laughs> and it was delicious and I feel a lot more awake today than I did yesterday and in a slightly better mood as well. So we've just navigated around a northerly cardinal that doesn't exist. And we're about to go over this you see the change in water here, that can mean a couple of things. It could either mean wind, or it could be current, or it could be depth. There is supposed to be a slightly deeper part around here, but uh, it doesn't quite correlate with the chart. So I'm hoping it's not current because we're back up to five and a half knots, which is brilliant after slogging away at two and a half knots yesterday. 
it feels good to be going normal speed again. Uh, but we'll find out any second now what happens here. If it's wind, that's great. We can put the sails back out and uh, might be close hauled. Here it comes. We've just crossed it and I think that was current. Uh, speed has dropped down to five knots, so we we're doing five and a half. It's now just about making five knots, so that's clearly a current line. Don't forget, of course, we've got all these estuaries coming off the, uh, the mainland here. And as they feed out, they're going to affect our speed. So we have a broken FAD, which is a fish attraction device. And these are made up of uh, bamboo, palm, they're basically big floating devices to attract fish because of course fish are attracted to anything that floats in the water they use it as a little place to hang out, hide from the sun. Where you got Liz? I don't know what Liz is doing. Over there! So I'm just <laughs> trying to con Liz through all the broken debris. You've got turns sitting on some of them You've got logs that float vertically like this. So we're just keeping an eye out to make sure there's nothing significant. I think most of it is actually, uh, you can see these guys behind me. Uh, they were to our port and they're now steering over to starboard to avoid uh, the majority of the FAD, which I can see floating in the water just over behind the camera there. This bit behind me now is not an insignificant block of wood you definitely wouldn't want to hit that on the side of your hull. And of course with some of these uh, logs that you see they'll have branches that are pointing downwards and outwards underwater. So always best to just steer clear of them as much as possible. But I think that's it. So that was a few hundred meters of broken FAD. It could have been a couple and um, I think we're now clear of them. So our next obstacle is a sandbar which gets very shallow so we need to go around that. And then we make the next turn heading towards Tarakan itself because this whole time we've actually been navigating away from land just to get back out into deeper water and we're now literally doing a horseshoe turn and heading back into Tarakan. Tarakan, Nunakan, I can, you can. I say we're approaching, we're back down to less than four knots, we've got that current against us again. Uh, Lindsay on Song Lines 3 has just had a very broken conversation with the Port Authority. Uh, they're picking on him because he has the most powerful AIS and VHF. So uh, they've been asking him lots of questions. I managed to catch a little bit. Anyway, they've asked us to WhatsApp through our port clearance from Nunakan. Meanwhile, we're just approaching now the main shipping channel and uh, we're going past some anchored vessels, some tugs and some loading uh, cargo ships and so on. Behind me you can see a big uh, container ship and he's being loaded up with what looks like coal from these visiting tugs that are taking the barges up alongside and you can probably see just there maybe there's another one that's just uh, been emptied and he's now going back out that other way. We've seen the tugs and the barges all the way down the coast and this is obviously what they're doing loading these up. It makes for interesting navigation though because we've got a very strong current, almost two knots coming from the northwest, so the autopilot is having to obviously compensate for that. Um, but when you're just steering on auto or hand steering, you've got to be mindful of the fact that you are being pushed over to port. Behind me is Tarakan, the island of Tarakan. I'm just going to turn around so we've out of the wind. Uh, it's been a hard old slog this last few hours. We've just hitting the uh, low water so the tide's going to start turning and hopefully our speed should increase. And as I look down now we've gone from two and a half to over three which is great. So the last home stretch hopefully we'll be able to do a little bit quicker. A few clouds building especially on the mainland of Kalimantan which we can see down there. Liz has looked at the satellite imagery and there is nothing but rainforest there. And um, there's a few clouds building over Tarakan but hopefully we can get in before we get hit. All I hope for is a calm anchorage tonight and a good night's sleep. Uh, we do have a contact we've been in touch with uh, based on the island and I think 
they keep pushing this particular restaurant which we must visit and it's a stilted restaurant out, out on a jetty so uh, I don't think we're going to make it tonight I think we're probably all a bit tired but it does look like a good spot and I figured if we can actually anchor right next to it we could even use it as a kind of base where we could take our dinghies ashore so bored we've been going 2.3 knots in in harsh incredibly hot weather so it's not been my favorite day I've done a lot of things below cleared out a lot of things I had to do cleared out the freezer redid that redid a whole load of vegetables blah 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 blah, blah. so lots of chores done while we've just been uh, to Tarakan now the tide's turned and we've gone from 2.3 to 4.3 knots in half an hour we're on 5.1 we're on 5.1 so now a nice sail in not even a sail actually there's not enough wind but a nice glide in to what looks like a fairly commercial and um, quite interesting port we'll find out more tomorrow because not going ashore tonight tired long day Well, here we are, the bustling town of, I don't know what it is, but we're close to the restaurant. Liz and I are just having a debate as to whether we are anchored far enough out or even further enough in, whatever. There seems to be a bit of an inshore channel there. So Sue and Ian have anchored much close to the restaurant, but they're just currently being passed by a row row. And we've just seen a few uh, motorboats buzzing past. So we've decided to anchor with the uh, tugs and their barges. I just hope that they have nice secure anchorages because I wouldn't fancy one of those bearing down on us in shit weather. I reckon being by the barges, which are full of stuff that's worth, worth a lot of money, is probably a good thing. They probably know what they're doing. They, they're not going to disappear quickly in a blow. What do you think? I think so. Anyway, <laughs> theory. Famous last words. Yeah. Anyway, we're here. Hurrah! 10 hours today. We've been at it for 10 hours. 